You know, 2 Corinthians 6 and 2 said, I have heard thee in an accepted time, and in the day of salvation I have secured you. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, today is the day of salvation. Yes. Somebody say today. today. Hebrews 3, 7 says, Wherefore today, if you'll hear the voice of the Holy Ghost. When it comes to serving God, Holy Ghost always says today. Hello? When it comes to living for Jesus, Holy Ghost will always say, somebody say, always say, today. He'll never say, wait till Sunday. He'll never say, wait till you get things right in your life. He'll never say, wait uh, uh, and clean up here and clean up there. No, Holy Ghost always says, today. Somebody say, today is the day. Somebody say, of salvation. Hallelujah. In other words, it's now. The time is now. Glory to God to serve him. If you've ever served him, you better serve him now. Come on, anybody here, Holy Ghost. It ain't good enough to just have had served him somewhere in the past. Because the Bible said in Matthew 24 and verse 13, but he that endures to the end, the same shall be saved. Somebody shouts, you got to endure to the end. You got to be found serving him when he comes or you'll be left behind because Luke 9 62 said if a man puts his hand to the plow and he looks back he's not fit for the kingdom of God Hebrews 10 38 the Bible said the just shall live by faith but if any man draw back my soul shall have no pleasure with him verse 39 of Hebrews 10 but we are those who believe to the saving of the soul and we don't draw back to perdition in other words the writer in Hebrew, and I believe it was Paul the Apostle, he said the just live their faith. They don't just believe, but they believe what they believe. Come on, somebody. They're still living. Not, not they lived at one point in the past by faith, but they're living right now in today. Come on, that's present tense. They're living by their faith. They're living their faith out. Hallelujah. He said, because we don't believe and returning back to the perdition or to the sin but we believe to the saving of the soul ain't that amazing that the book of hebrews 10 verse 38 and 38 says the saving of the soul is the one that's living by faith in other words he was saying you can draw back or you can draw nigh somebody shout if you draw back when he comes back you'll be left back you won't go come on anybody here holy ghost jesus is coming and today somebody shout you may have served him yesterday but hear the word of the Lord today is the day of salvation. You got to serve him today. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. You can't return back and go back. Hallelujah. You better get settled. You better get your mind made up. Because somebody say today is the day of salvation. Hallelujah. Go ahead and play that first track I got at the top of that list, if you will, for me. Hallelujah. Give me a little effects up here. Hallelujah. You don't miss the water till the well runs dry. You don't miss your horse until you're ready to ride. You don't miss the cow till the milk's all gone. But if you miss heaven though, you waited too long, you got to make up your mind. Stop wasting time Don't take for granted The one that offers life Leave comes to kill Destroy and steal but Jesus said I'll give you Abundant life that's real So a little time Make up your mind Somebody shout It's time to make up your mind Hallelujah why should we do today what we can do tomorrow? That seems to be the worst state of mind. Procrastination is most people's motto. Well, that used to work, but now we're running out of time. You got to make up your hey, stop wasting time. Don't take for granted the one that offers life. Leave comes to kill, destroy and sin. Jesus said, I'll give you abundant life that's real. So a little time, make 
Make up your mind You got to make up your mind Stop wasting time Don't take for granted The one that offers life Thief comes to kill And destroy and steal but Jesus said I'll give you Bond of life that's real So a little time Make up your mind Make up your mind Time. He's coming. Come on, somebody. Just let it keep playing. I don't even might have forgot what's there, but Holy Ghost told me to sing them. I'll tell you when to stop it. Just let her play until I say stop. Hallelujah. We magnify you, Lord. We want you, Jesus. In the morning, when I rise, in the morning. When I rise in the morning, when I rise, give me Jesus, give me Jesus, give me Jesus, you can all this world give me Jesus when I am alone oh when I am alone oh when I am alone give me Jesus Son hath life, but he that hath not the Son hath not life. First John 5 20. Hallelujah. Listen to this very important. When I come to die, oh Lord, one day when I come to die, oh when I come to die, give me a cheek. Jesus. Give me Jesus. Give me Jesus. You can have all this world. Give me Jesus. Give me Skip that next song and put the next one on. It'll say, Cross standing in the way. Hallelujah. 
Thank you, Holy Ghost. We worship you, Jesus. Thank you, Spirit of life. Holy promise of God. Eternal life, 1 John 2, 25. The most important promise. When my flesh is weak and I'm discouraged about life And I've convinced myself giving up would be alright Then Satan whispers just take the path of yesterday Oh, but it's not that easy When there's a cross standing in my way Yeah, the cross stands between to hell oh it leads through Calvary yes there's a cross standing between me and forever if I go down I'll have to pass right by that tree Sinner hear the words I'm saying to you now If sin's flames and hell become your home I don't see how Because you'll go there through loved ones' prayers they've prayed each day, each day. And not to mention, there's a bloody cross standing in your way. Oh, the cross stands between. to hell see it goes right by bloody Calvary yes there's a cross standing between me and forever if I go down I'll have to pass right by that tree oh and if you go down to hell you'll have to pass right by on the cross that them that perish is foolishness but unto us that are saved it is the power of God. First Corinthians 1 Corinthians 1.18 you can stop the music. Hallelujah thank you Lord for your cross Hallelujah for the preaching of it. It's for one purpose though there's many Lord but the above all at the top of the list reason the cross is to be preached is so those that are about to perish those that are on their way to hell can be saved if they'll believe. Hallelujah. The preaching of the cross to them that perish that are on their way to hell seems a foolish thing. But us that are saved is the power of God. Hallelujah. First Corinthians 1 Corinthians 1.18 And Lord, your cross, Jesus, what you did on that cross is the only way of escape from an eternal place in hell. Hallelujah. Thank you for the cross. There won't nobody in eternity say we didn't know. 
nobody even if they wind up in a lake of fire in an eternal flame tormented forever never will they ever be able to say I didn't hear about the cross I didn't hear about the Christ that was crucified on that cross don't nobody go to hell without first passing by this message anybody hear Holy Ghost that's reality hallelujah I said that's reality hallelujah thank you Jesus you know Psalms 119 verse 53 David said Haro has taken hold on me because of the wicked that had forsook your ways or forsook your law rather David made the statement he said Haro somebody say Haro fear a torment had come on him righteous David because of the wicked he saw that were forsaken the word of God who were going apart from God's ways and his word to live their life however they wanted to live it and he said horror took hold on me Pastor Ruby when I awakened this morning before daylight that scripture divinely deposited into my spirit hallelujah modernly we would say it was downloaded well God knows how to download and he don't need a Wi-Fi internet connection to do it if you connected to him in Jesus come on somebody in the Holy Ghost I'm telling you he'll download stuff in your spirit and I heard that scripture echoing in amen my soul in my mind over and over and over hallelujah and a horror somebody say a holy horror there's a such thing as a holy horror this holy horror hit my spirit hallelujah and I began to think about the people I'd seen just in the last few days just in going and coming even in this area and on my way here and, and the many times that I could lost count of I've heard people walking using the F word and just on and on and, and, and the filth that's on television you can't even turn it hardly on no more because of the debauchery and the wickedness and the vileness and people making fun amen of the things of God and that that's holy and faith in God and all you ever hear is about heaven and now you movie stars and you late night host and different ones of famous television platforms amen will make jokes about things and they'll make movies and they'll say stuff about heaven but nobody's ever talking about hell hallelujah preachers I don't even like to preach on it no more hallelujah they'll like to talk about heaven and preach about heaven but somebody shout there's another side to eternity everybody leaving this world is not going to heaven every preacher that's dying ain't going to heaven every person that packs a pew and gives an offering in the plate when it's passed it sings in the choir come on and worships in the sanctuary it's not going to heaven come on anybody here Holy Ghost I'm telling you every funeral that's being preached at that person laying in that casket amen every one of them didn't go to heaven oh ain't nobody here Holy Ghost God said in Psalms 37 verse 37 mark the end of a perfect man perfect means a righteous man for the end of that man is peace the only RIP that can be pinned and placed on a tombstone on a headstone of the deceased is the righteous because there is no peace saith the Lord to the wicked if you die without Jesus as the Lord of your life if you leave this world just having been a good church member and a good church attendee oh, I'll hear the Holy Ghost and Christ was not the Lord of your life it don't matter how good in two shoes you it were and how good of things you did if you leave this life without being born again you will spend eternity separated from God in a place that Matthew 25 and 41 says is hell where he's prepared for the devil and his angels Somebody say hello. So that holy horror about a literal place in eternity called hell began to bother me. Began to stir me and be stir me and disturb me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. And God began to just take me on a journey all day. Hallelujah in the spirit. And, and then told me you got to preach this. You got to preach it and you got to preach it now. Hallelujah. Amen. Right. Somebody shout, Hell's got a horror house. Hell's horror house. That's what I want to title this message tonight. 
Amen. As we approach what many celebrate, uh, 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 Halloween time, and I'm not going to get into the depths of that. I got stuff and notes on social media that you can get into a, a deep teaching of that, and I could tonight. Amen. Glory to God. Take you places in that, uh, but that ain't what I'm here about. But as we approach uh, this, so to speak, festive time of fun with fear and horror and come on amen anybody hear the holy ghost and darkness a lot of people are, are getting ready to to attend horror houses and, and they'll pay lots of money to walk through a, a dark house with the spider webs everywhere and demonic looking creatures and scary sounds and death and murder and uh, you, you, you name it just to have a little thrill with fear and just let it be fun but i want you to know the dark images of halloween are a reality in eternity. I want you to know hell is an eternal horror house. Come on where there is no exits. You won't be able to pay and walk through it in 30 minutes and come out of it. Oh, because once you die and leave this earth without Jesus and you enter hell, hell is forever. Anybody here, Holy Ghost, I'm telling you and the monsters there are for real. They're not, amen, people with masks on that they bought down at Walmart. Hallelujah or the dollar store. I'm telling you the demonic images and figures there are forever real. He he hello somebody. Anybody here Holy Ghost? And I couldn't help when David said again in Psalms 119 Hallelujah 53 he said horror have taken hold of me. He weren't in, in terrified about the horrors of hell because he weren't going there. But there was a holy horror that hit him about this horror eternal house. Come on the devil's abode where the devil's gonna go with his fallen angels hallelujah somebody say to hell with the devil because that's where he's going he don't got a choice in the matter because revelation 20 and 10 said the devil which deceived them was cast into the lake of fire where the beast and false prophets are it shall be tormented day and night forever and ever hell is not a place of partying hell is not a place where there's a big stage and a concert with metallica and acdc and all the budweiser and all the jack daniels you can drink and all the sex you can have. There's no thrills in hell. All the whores in hell ain't even got curves. They don't even got body parts. All they are is a bunch of burning bones and stench of burning nasty flesh. Ain't no beauty in hell. Ain't nothing desirable in hell. Ain't no morphine in hell. There's nothing to take away the pain. There's nothing to take away the sorrow. In Proverbs 5 and 27, God speaks about a whorish woman. Amen. And he said, in her house leads down to hell. Somebody say, the whore house is a hell house. Somebody shout, ain't no whores. Amen. In hell pretty. Mm, if they leave this earth without turning their life over to Jesus and repenting of that sexual perversion, come on, anybody here, Holy Ghost, uh, they'll spend eternity. Uh, hallelujah. They won't have to find uh, no bathing suit to wear. They won't be able to strut around their curves and their nakedness because uh, all they'll be is burning flesh. Uh, come on, somebody. Ain't nothing attractive about hell. Hell is an eternal horror house. Hell's eternal horror house where there is no exits. Isaiah 5 and 14 said, Hell hath enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure. And they're pumped and they're multitude. And they that rejoice it shall rejoice shall descend there into it. Somebody say, Hell hath enlarged herself. Hell's described, amen, in the uh sex of female her because hell tries to appear attractive and to allure the desires of humanity come on hebrews 11 25 says it this way amen sin has pleasure only for a season hell advertises come have fun because you only got one life to live but that's a lie straight out of the pit of hell you got more than one life to live because when you leave this earth you go into eternity you're going to live forever either in heaven or 
or you gonna live forever in hell and you ain't going to heaven because you was a good church member you ain't going to hell because you can clap good and shout hallelujah in the church service and throw an offering in the plate when it was passed anybody here holy ghost the only way you gonna escape the flames of eternal hell hallelujah is through faith in the blood of Jesus and his cross there is no other way because he said I am the way the truth and the life no man can come unto the father but by me John 14 and 6 my Lord hear the Holy Ghost Pastor Ruby said hell hath enlarged her mouth her she, she appears attractive at the beginning her mouth in other words without measure somebody shout they still room in hell years ago a man come blowing by me in his truck on the interstate he went by me so fast I was wondering if I was going to need to find me a body shop afterwards and get my paint replaced I mean he just about blew me off the road and I got a little irritated and uh, he was recklessly kind of the way he was driving so I sped up to get close enough I was going to see if I you know in case something happened I was going to have his tag you know number because the way he was driving and uh, when I got close I forgot about the tag because I saw a, a big sticker on his back window right behind the driver's side on the back window and it said I've been to hell and come back because it was full I said Lord if you let that man stop somewhere I'll get out and tell him the truth I ain't no more thought that as a prayer and his blinker come on he pulled out and got into the drive of a gasoline station boy I was all bold and ready and he stepped out and when he stepped out the truck rolls up glory to God about five six inches looked like hallelujah and he stepped out looked like three of me that way and this way I said oh God Lord help me Jesus I praise God I hope this is you I believe it is but I knew it was because when I opened my mouth he was like a little mouse to me come on somebody hallelujah I'm telling you hey man I, I looked at him I said sir you just come by me and I didn't even deal with that I didn't even go there hallelujah I said but I noticed a sticker on your back window he said oh yeah man don't you like that he said whoa and he, he, he was laughing about it and I said have you ever read the Bible he's pumping his gas and he looked at me and that's when he looked like a little mouse to me then I saw the Holy Ghost. He looked at me real funny looking without a word. And I said, Isaiah 5, 14 says, Hell hath enlarged herself and opened her mouth without measure. I said, your sticker says there's no room. I came back. I, I said, that's a lie. That's what hell wants you to believe. But I said, there's still room in hell for people just like you, people just like me that won't follow the Lord Jesus Christ and what he did on that cross and repent of their sins. He looked at me and his face looked a little bloodshot and he said, are you a preacher? I said, I am. He began to cry while he was pumping his gas. That big old massive, amen, masculine looking man began to weep. He said, I'm a backslider. He said, I was raised in church. I've been running from God. I said, well, God has run you down today. And if you don't come back to him, you're going to go to a hell that never gets full. I said, but here's the gospel. Here's the truth. There's still room at the cross. I said, there's still room at the cross. There's room in heaven for people just like you. Hallelujah. I said, John 6 and 37 says, he'll in no eyes turn away those that'll come unto him. I said, you need to come back before it's too late. Hell enlarged herself without measure. And their pomp, that means all their worldliness and all their wealth and all their multitudes. Come on, somebody. All the groups of them. Hell's going to have a lot of people in it. There's a lot up there now. I'm about to mess with somebody, but you're not guaranteed entrance into heaven because you're a good person. You can die a hero and save a life, but if you ain't been to the foot of cross, you'll go to the same hell of a terrorist or some wicked person with a gun in their hand, amen, killing others in cold blood. That's sad to think, ain't it? 
It's horrible to think, but it's the truth. There is no other guaranteed entrance into heaven but through the blood of Jesus' cross. There ain't no other way. Pastor Ruby, I can die on foreign souls defending my country and saving innocent lives, but if I die without Jesus, I'll go to the same hell that all the wicked go to. I can save somebody from a burning building and die in the process and then live. Hallelujah. But if I die in that flame without Jesus, I'll find myself in eternity where there's the flame, where the fire is never quenched and the worm dieth not. Mark 9 43. Does that bother you? I hope it does. Because there's a foul spirit of religion in this world today that somehow thinks everybody good goes to heaven. Friend, God said in his word in Isaiah 64 and 6, our righteousness is as filthy rags. I ain't good enough to make it to heaven. I can't do enough of good things to get there. They ain't but one that's worthy enough to be called Savior. And that's Jesus. For he knew no sin. Wow. 1 Peter 2, 22. And if I'm not following him, guess where I'm heading? To hell. Anybody here Holy Ghost? Preacher, I don't like that. Well, good, the devil don't either. Get in line behind him. Amen. I'm tired of hearing trash and it's called truth. Notice he said they're popped. All their wealth. These people are going to die and go to hell over a dollar bill. Gonna die and go to hell over a dollar bill. They steal from God. Can't get them to pay their tithes. But they love Jesus. Thief's a thief. And if they'll steal from God, they'll steal from you. They steal from Uncle Sam and whoever. Cheat on their taxes every year. Try to cut corners here and there. A thief's a thief. Y'all heard me the other night about that dollar and 49 cent, dollar 50 cent pack of roll eggs I forgot to have in my pocket. Had to go back into Walmart. I know what some's thinking right there, but brother, you wouldn't have lost your salvation over that. Hallelujah. Friend, a thief's a thief. If I don't went knowingly, come on somebody that I owed that store a dollar and 50 cent, amen, and I walked out of there and said, well, God understands. Some would even call it the damn modern Christian. Oh, what a blessing. That ain't no blessing. You better walk yourself right back in there. If Jesus lives in you, you'll go pay for it. You won't cut corners. You won't lie. You won't cheat. You won't steal. Anybody here, Holy Ghost? Yes. He said, and they that rejoiceth shall descend there into it. This is Isaiah 5, 14. Him that rejoices. When I heard that today in the spirit, the Lord spoke to me. This is Isaiah 5, 14. Let me quote it again. Hell hath enlarged herself. Yes. Open herself, open her mouth without measure. And they're pumped and they're multitude. And them that rejoiceth shall descend there into it. Right then, Pastor Ruby, I, I could see church people come to church on Sunday morning and they're rejoicing. Because today everybody's saved. Ooh, I'm singing Amazing Grace. Just like a past administration did, hey man, a year and a half or so ago, hallelujah, stood on a platform, hey man, one morning and applauded uh, the legalization of marriage between a man and a man and a woman and a woman. And then that afternoon flew to another state, hallelujah, and stood up on that same TV program, hallelujah, and praise God, so to speak, singing Amazing Grace at a church service, a memorial service. A member of the innocent had been slain by a demon-possessed boy in a church. That was none other than Barack Obama. He stood up that morning and celebrated same-sex marriage. But then that afternoon, stood in God's house in another state and sang with them. Hallelujah and clapped to amazing grace. Somebody shout, the devil is a liar. That's the way people's doing it today. Everybody's a Christian just because they sing a song. Hi! And a 
attend the church service. I'm telling you what, there's going to be a lot of church members in hell. There's going to be a lot of preachers in hell because you wouldn't warn them. You wouldn't tell them the truth. You wouldn't tell them the sin they were living in was going to separate them from God forever. All because they brought a lot of ties to the church. And them little puppets of the devil who say we don't want to we don't want to offend nobody, but God ain't called us to preach on all that. We we just encourage people. Do what? So you mean you encourage people to stay in their sin? To continue on in their sin all in the name of grace? God forbid, Romans 6, verse 1 and 2 says. Uh, come on, anybody here, Holy Ghost. Uh, the grace of God uh, that's appeared unto all men and leads us to salvation. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Not only, amen, leads us to salvation, but teaches us uh, that we ought to deny ungodliness, uh, live righteous and soberly in this present world. Uh, Titus chapter 2, uh, verse 11 and 12. Uh, the same grace of God uh, that saves your soul uh, is the same grace of God uh, that separates your soul from the sin. Matthew 1 21. You will call his name Jesus and he'll save his people from their sin. He don't save us and leave us in it or we ain't saved. Let him that names the name of Christ depart from his iniquity. Let him leave it. Proverbs 28 and 13. If you confess and forsake your sins you'll have mercy. Somebody say confess and forsake it. Mark 1 15 Jesus come preaching listen to what he said he come preaching repent and believe the gospel today there's a gospel so to speak being preached without repentance there's a righteousness being offered today without repentance but Jesus said you didn't really believe until you repent repent means not just to change your mind it means to turn to God and turn from that that's opposed to God. Hallelujah. Anybody here, Holy Ghost? Hell has an eternal horror house. Hell is an eternal horror house. And can't you see Isaiah 5, 14? They that rejoice descending down there into it. Sunday morning people gathered like the elder prodigal of Luke chapter 15 who the Bible says his father came out to entreat him when his younger brother who had wasted all his living on riotous living all his wealth uh, that's what prodigal means wasted uh, and now he's come back to daddy's house daddy's received him put a coat on him uh, put a ring on his finger put new shoes on his feet and killed the fatted calf uh, but the elder son uh, is standing outside the house he's mad and he don't even know what it means for the sound of the music and the party and the dancing that's going on because his brother that was lost now is found uh, come on uh, but he don't even understand that he's mad uh, because daddy didn't do it for him and daddy's trying to entreat him to get him to come back in and the parable ends in Luke 15 about the elder son not coming in he stays on the outside somebody shout it's a portrait of the worst of the wasters this is not a parable that Jesus taught about one prodigal son the younger it's a story about the prodigals both of them one was lost and left the father's house but the other was lost and stayed at the father's house it gives us the example of both those that go away from God and leave his house but tragically it shows us those who stay in the house and have religion but they've left God all body. come out they think because they show up on Sunday and sing hallelujah courses and amen and say amazing grace that somehow that justifies any sin they commit between then and the next time they come back anybody here holy God they're lost in the house. That's why Jesus said in Matthew 10 and 2, go preach my gospel to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Somebody say, lost sheep in the house. Lost in the house. Isaiah 5, 14, they're rejoicing. Having church service. Preacher, if you're watching, and you don't never preach about the other side of eternity, you're going to spend eternity in that other place called hell. 
you're afraid to say hell at a funeral, you're probably going there. Because if all you ever do is preach heaven beautiful, hallelujah, and you don't preach hell horrible. Come on, how in the world can you invite somebody to heaven without first warning them about an eternal place called hell? Because in Luke 16 and 28, that rich man lifted up his eyes in torment. Somebody shout in a place called hell. Hell is not just a word that's cursed or slain. It's a cursed place. Somebody shout, hell is a place. Just as real as heaven is. A place. In John chapter 3, Nicodemus come by night to Jesus in verse 2. He said, I know you're from God because no man can do miracles except God be with him that you do. And Jesus began to preach to him in verses 3 and John 3, except a man be born again, he will not enter into the kingdom of God. Nicodemus, that Pharisee, said, how can I enter again into my mother's womb and be born all over again? And Jesus began to teach him, except a man be born of the water and of the spirit, he will not enter into the kingdom of God. Because that which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. What was Jesus talking about? When you were inside your mother's womb, after, hey man, your mother conceived the seed of your father, and God curiously wrought your parts, as Psalms 139 says, in secret places, as he was making you male and female, as he was forming you inside of your mother's womb. Somebody say, what a miracle. Hallelujah. Praise God. Water, hey man, built up around you, and you lived in water for nine months. And then your mother's water broke uh, and you were born. Somebody shout a woman can't birth a child until the water breaks. So when Jesus said you got to be born of the water, he wasn't talking about being baptized uh, at your denominational headquarters. Uh, come on the way they said to be done. Uh, hallelujah. And that gets you saved. Uh, listen, the blood of Jesus is the only thing that will save you. Uh, Ephesians 2.13 uh, said ye, uh, come on somebody where sometimes afar off but are made nigh by the blood of Christ. First uh, John 1.7 said the blood of Jesus Christ his son cleanses us from all our sin. Uh, amen. The thief on the cross uh, glory to God Jesus told him because he believed today you will be with me in paradise. Jesus didn't have to unnail himself in the thief and take him down to the water and baptize him in it before he could be saved. Somebody shout you can die without being baptized in water. Amen. If you believed on Jesus, you'll still go to heaven. Whether you baptize in water or not does not save you. You mean baptized in every water hole in Crete and come on somebody river between here, praise God in California, and Kermit the Frog be your nearest kin. But it ain't gonna wash no sins away. It ain't gonna forgive you of no error. Come on, there ain't but one forgiving agent and that's the blood of the Lamb. Cornelius' house in Acts chapter 10 were believers. They were giving alms. Somebody shout, that's what believers do. They give to God. Right. And, and they gave alms. Listen, and Peter come and preached to them. And when he preached to them, they were all filled with the Holy Ghost, began to speak with other tongues, verse 45, and magnify God. Somebody say they were saved. They were given. They feared God. And Peter preached to them the cross of Jesus and they all got filled with the Holy Ghost and they all got filled with the baptism of the Holy Ghost and spake with other tongues and magnified God. And then Peter looked around and said, what forbids thee to be baptized in water? That's it. They're already saved. They're already filled with Holy Ghost speaking with other tongues. And then he said, well, let's just go on down to the river and just dunk you in the name of Jesus. Come on, somebody. Anybody hear Holy Ghost? Uh, in other words, uh, when they got washed in the water, when they went in the baptism of water, they didn't get saved then. They're already saved. Any doctrine that tells you otherwise is demonic. The water of John 3 is the first birth because Jesus said in verse 4, that which is born of flesh, right after he said about the water, is flesh. The water's broke. But Jesus said, I'm not just talking about a first birth that's of the natural, that's of the flesh. I'm talking about that one that's of the spirit. The born again, it 
spirits of the spirit born from above come on anybody here holy ghost hallelujah and jesus told him in verse 7 don't marvel that i said you must be born again because verses 8 of john 3 he said hey man for they that are born of the spirit are like the wind that blows you hear the sound you don't know where it comes or where it goes so is everyone that's born of the spirit jesus told him you must be born of the spirit if you're going to go to heaven. In other words, you've been born one time. And if you was born once, that means you were born into sin. Because Romans 3.23 said, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Psalms 51 and 6, David said, In iniquity my mother conceived me. Somebody shout, all of us was born in sin. That's why. It's imperative we must be born again or we will not enter into heaven. It's just that simple. And do you know Nicodemus, as great a man as he was, you even find him after Jesus was crucified going with Joseph of Arimathea to prepare the body of Christ from the cross and paying great money and wealth to get Jesus' body prepared for the burial. But what they didn't know, they thought they were letting him have their tomb, but they were right. He borrowed it because he didn't need to buy it. He could have come up out of it in three days. <laughs> Hallelujah. But you know, nowhere in Scripture does it say that Nicodemus ever believed on him. Because in John's writings, John chapter, I believe it's 11, or 12 rather, the Bible said in verse 45 and 46 that there were many of the Pharisees in that time that believed on Jesus. They believed he was the Son of God, but they would not confess him publicly for fear of the Jews that they would be removed or excommunicated from the temple. See, Revelation 21 and 8 said the fearful, somebody say the fearful. The word fearful would be those that are ashamed and concerned about what everybody else thinks. The fearful and the unbelieving. Come on. There's the atheist. And the murderer. And the sorcerer. That's those that practice witchcraft. That play around the dark worlds of that that's of the spirit. Hello? Hallelujah. And he said, whoremongers. What's a whoremonger? That's a man that mongers with whores. That mingles. With whores, because it's the man that makes that woman the whore. So he's the whoremonger. You having sex with somebody you ain't married to and you're a female, you're a whore. I didn't write it. Look at your neighbor and say, don't stop breathing. Somebody just went, oh, don't turn it off. Hello? Hebrews 13 and 4, the Bible said in the word of the Lord, in all marriage is honorable and the bed's undefiled, meaning it's pure. Somebody say in marriage, sex is pure. Look at your neighbor, say thank God because you got here because of it. Ain't nobody in this room or nobody watching got here any other way. They weren't one made, come on, or two that were made without sex intercourse and that was the first man, Adam, and the first woman, Eve. And then the third one was Jesus because he was conceived inside of the virgin womb of Mary by the power and the person of the Holy Ghost, Matthew 1, 20. So that's three. Him the only one. The rest of us got here because of it. So the very act is not something that's vile and wicked, but yet if it's done outside the boundaries of what God has laid out and designed for marriage, it is. And he warns that in all marriages honorable, the bed's pure, but whoremongers and adulterers, God will judge. Somebody shout, don't be deceived. There's a spirit of deception in the modern Christian church today that's Christian in name only, I'm afraid. Amen, that think they can come and confess Jesus, raise their hands on Sunday morning and sleep with whoever they want to anytime they get ready. You can cover your sin up with a condom, but it's still sin. 
If you ain't married and you having sex with somebody, whether it's the opposite sex or even if it's the same sex, you are lost. You will die and go to hell. I don't care how much you say I love Jesus and how many songs you sing about heaven. You're lost. You're lost. And when you get right, you'll repent. You'll either get married or you'll move out. Because 1 Corinthians 6 verses 9, Paul the apostle, Paul was appalled. He often said in the book of Corinthians, what? Remember that? What? Paul was appalled. He couldn't believe that, that people in the church was believing like this. But he said 1 Corinthians 6 and 9, he said, the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. And then he said, be not deceived, neither fornicators nor idolaters, nor adulterers, nor effeminate, nor abuser of themselves or mankind. Let me just stop on them five. All right. Go ahead. You know, it's been said preachers that name sin and preach on sin and hellfire and brimstone that they're doing more sin than everybody. That's why they preach on so much. Well, if that's the case, Jesus must have been one of the biggest sinners there ever was because he preached over, come on, there's over 400 references in the Bible to hell. And Jesus preached more on it. Come on, somebody. And all the apostles did. Hallelujah. And he preached more about it than he did even hell. So if preaching on hell makes me bound to hell, if preaching on sin makes me a sinner, come on, somebody. Hallelujah. And then you keep believing that trash if you want to. Because if that's the truth, well, then Jesus and all the apostles were some of the biggest sinners and jokes you've ever seen. Because they sure weren't afraid to preach on it. Paul said, don't be deceived. The unrighteous are not going to heaven. And then he gives a list. He names some of them. Now this ain't the only ones. Yes. Come on. Because 1 John 3, 15, the Bible says, no murderer hath eternal life abiding in him. And he's talking about hating your brother. Look at your neighbor and say, if you hate somebody, you're a murderer and you'll die and go to hell if you don't repent of that. Well, we don't like to hear that in modern Christian, but that's the truth. I didn't write it. Anybody here, Holy Ghost? If you walk around with unforgiveness in your heart, God said in Luke 6 and 37, if you don't forgive, you won't be forgiven. And if you can't be forgiven, guess where you got? Now, if anybody knows about hell, it's Jesus. Because in Proverbs 20, verse 27, he said, hell is naked before him. Destruction don't have no covering. He sees it all. And so if he sees it all, he's letting us see it. He's giving us a little glimpse uh, because his word is how he sees. If you want to see with his sight, you've got to see it through his word. You better not leave. That's a demon telling you to get up and leave. You better, you better not listen to that. Hallelujah. Listen, this, this is amazing right here. Fornicators. What, who, who's a fornicator? That's people having sex who ain't married to each other. Right. Ain't that pretty just plain? Yeah. Hey, don't turn it off. If you having sex with somebody you ain't married to them, I don't care if you go to church every time the door opens, you are lost. You're the ones coming to his house rejoicing in Isaiah 5 and 14 that hell has opened her mouth to swallow up when you die. You know the word fornicate or fornication comes from the word fornix, where we get the word foyer from, the foyer of the church, the entrance of the church. Somebody say that's a foyer. That's a fornix. Well, in the times of those Roman Colosseum days where they would slay Christians and tie them to post and burn them at stakes and let lions that had eight weeks turn loose on them and they'd watch it as a sport in the arena to watch Christians be killed and eat up by lions. In the fornix of the entrance of those Colosseums where Christians were being mass murdered and killed and martyred, Pastor Ruby, the scene was vile. 
because that's where the word fornication comes from from that fornex of that Roman Colosseum where prostitutes male and female would stand and openly give you whatever you wanted in the form of a sex act for enough of money in front of everybody there was no discretion amen it was just open sex whatever you wanted when you walked through what were they coming to do they were coming to have sexual orgies amen same sex orgies it didn't matter hallelujah heterosexual homosexual before they entered in and sat down on the seating to watch Christians be murdered and if you don't think that fornication will murder your faith in God you have already been deceived anybody here Holy Ghost it's a killer of Christianity you can't live sexually impure in this world and think cause you show up at church every now and then you gonna make it to heaven when you die be not deceived you go to hell That's Ruby, he said, idolaters. Idolaters are anyone that puts anything before God. They worship something besides God. Yeah. We live in a time that 2 Timothy 3 says, men are lovers of themselves rather than lovers of God. Yeah. Verses 2, say, that's why the times are perilous times. Because men love themselves. They love their opinions instead of his truth. They change the truth of God into a lie. They worship the creature themselves. Creation rather than the creator which is blessed forever and ever. Amen. Romans 1 verse 25. And when they do that, then verse 26, women leave their natural use. Hallelujah. Amen. Which is against nature. Hallelujah. Now women are with women. And likewise, verse 27, men leave the natural use of a woman and burn not in love but in lust one for another doing that which is unseemly among themselves with their bodies Receiving as the heir of the recompense of their reward. Anybody here, Holy Ghost? That's Romans 1, 25 through 27. When mankind begins to worship their opinions instead of the truth. When they worship their ideas and the truth they make up as truth. Instead of God's absolute truth. When they try to redefine marriage between one man and one woman. When they say it's okay, amen, to accept the marriage of a man. Amen, with a man and a woman with a woman woman what's next man wants to marry his mule let's do because Leviticus 18 22 the Bible said if a man lays with a man like he does with a woman it's an abomination then in verse 22 or 23 it goes on and said a woman shall not lay down before a beast what's next if a man can marry a man and a woman a woman, next somebody's going to bring their dog to the courthouse and say, I want to marry my dog so I can have sex with him. Somebody shout, I know it sounds gross, uh, but I want you to see this is straight out of hell. It says, that's why it's gross. Uh, that's why it's horror because hell is an eternal horror house hallelujah and you know the government may give you the legalization for you to flaunt your flesh on the streets of America and shout and dance with your rainbow flags and announce now we done it we got our freedom you may have got your freedom in man's eyes but God will never say it's okay because Genesis 1 28 God bless them God didn't bless him and God didn't bless hers he blessed them he blessed one him and one her how do you know because when Adam knew his wife Eve she conceived and brought forth their firstborn called Cain Genesis 4 1 the blessing is reproduction man and a man can't make nothing but AIDS hello Anybody here, Holy Ghost? Yes. And he said, the effeminate. Amen. First Corinthians 6 and 9. The effeminate, feminine, is a man that somehow thinks he's a woman. Hello? Oh God. Look at your neighbor saying, man ought to look like man. Amen. Woman ought to look like a woman. Nowadays, you don't know who you're looking at. Because so many people have been confused and deceived. You don't know if it's a him or a her. You just have to refer to him or her as a shim. 
I had a man one night and I know he was a man. Hello? Reason I know, I ain't never seen a pretty man in my life. I don't care if I got makeup on. Come on. A man can even have a sex change. A woman too. Come on somebody. But in their chromosomes, uh, their very design, come on somebody, with inside them that God has made up as the make uh, of a male and a female can never be changed. Uh, if you draw their blood, it'll show up male every time. It'll show up female every time. Right. Yes. Told a man one night, and I know he's a man. Man grow hair on his face. Man's got, his hands are different. He may can even try to twist his hips, but he ain't got them. Hello? Ladies, y'all know what I'm talking about without getting too graphic. Hello? Man ain't got hips like that. Hello? Now he got a, and, 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 he, and ain't nobody can get a belly like a man. His shoulders, they different. Your whole structure, your body, is different. You can put a dress on and put high heels on, but even the calves of your legs. You can shave all the hair off of But all the men that know what I'm talking about that's been to straight street. Come on, anybody here, Holy Ghost. Preacher, you ought to make not make fun like that. You gotta make some people mad to get them right. Holy Ghost tell me this morning hell is horrible and nobody needs to go there. Go warn up. Yeah. Hundreds is watching right now live. And we are leaving in the future from this message. The effeminate. He said they ain't inheriting kingdom of heaven. I told that man. I knew he was a man. He had on lipstick and everything else. Hello? He had on woman, women's clothing and he even tried to walk like one. I was like, dude look like a lady, but dude ain't no lady. I know that the dude ain't no lady. And they wanted to argue and I said, if you're so confused, I said, there's two bathrooms right here. Ain't nobody in that one, ain't nobody in that one because we don't want to. I said, pick either which one you want to pick. Go check yourself, and if you ain't got a wound, guess what? Newsflash! You ain't no wound man. It's just that plain. Two people with the same parts can't make another life. And two people that's got the same sexual parts in a bed together is an abomination and it stinks in the nostrils of God. And you can keep believing that lie if you want to. If you stay in that, when he comes, you'll be left. Or if you die in that state, you'll spend eternity separated from him. Even if you go to your so-called now new homosexual churches that accept it. I can hear it now. What that old mean, mean spirited preacher. Hate speech. Hate speech, they'll call it. Hate speech. Ooh. What, what did Lot's two sons, son in law, say about him? Verse 14 of Genesis 19, he's telling them, Escape for your life, judgment's coming. And the men in that city were trying to have sex with the angels that came. And God had struck them with blindness to get the angels and Lot's family out of there. They wouldn't even take his two virgin daughters. They were that wicked, Pastor Ruby. They, the men didn't want two virgin women. They wanted three men. All right, Hello. And how in the world could them two men, Lot's son-in-laws, be married because they his son in law married to his two daughters and they his two daughters still be virgins. Because they were homosexual too. They just married some women to cover it up. 
And when Lot began to preach to them, that preacher of righteousness, you better escape from this Sodom and Gomorrah. The fire and brimstone is coming. They mocked him and they said, you're as one that mocks. In other words, it translates modernly, you're a hater, you're a hater, you're a hater. Well, I want you to know we're still protected even in gospel preaching under the Second Amendment or under the amendment rather of this United States of America. Come on, somebody with the freedom of speech. And I'm going to sound it loud and I'm going to spare not. Well, preacher, you ought to preach in love. Let me give you a revelation of that scripture in Ephesians 4.15. God said, preach the truth in love. Here it is. If you ain't preaching the truth, you don't love the souls you're preaching to. If you don't warn them about the sin and error of their ways. Oh, Paul said in 2 Corinthians 5 and verses 11, he said, knowing the terror, the horror of the Lord, the judgment in hell to sinners he said I persuade men everywhere to repent preach the truth in love I'm not preaching tonight. I pray nobody gets across that. I'm not preaching like I want somebody to go to hell <laughs> no if I wasn't warning them I'd be saying for them to go ahead and go hallelujah Holy Ghost. See, the reason Satan don't want people to believe this is he wants them to go where he's going. First Corinthians 6, 9 goes on to say, nor abusers of themselves with mankind, there's homosexuality. Don't be deceived, they're not entering the kingdom of heaven. Except, Luke 13, 3, they repent. That's the only exception. And to repent don't mean you say, Jesus, I love you and keep on doing it. You walk away from it. When Paul found Jesus, come on somebody, he was sent to straight street. In Matthew 12, when Jesus touched that man with a withered hand and told him to stretch it forth, somebody shout, his limp wrist got straight. When he met the man, Jesus. To think you're something other than what you were born is to ball your fist up in the face of God and say you made a mistake. Look at your neighbor and say, if God made you a man, he did not make a mistake. And all the men said, hallelujah. When God made you a female, dear lady, dear sister, he didn't make a mistake. You were no accident when it comes to the sex you were born as. Come on, somebody. And if you try to change that anyway, hallelujah, form or fashion, you play in God. You have done as Satan has done. You've said, I'll exalt myself against the most high and above him. And if that got Satan kicked out of heaven, it'll keep you out of heaven. If that'll send Satan to hell, it'll send you, except you repent and turn from it. Somebody say, turn or burn, that's it. 1 Corinthians 6, verses 10. How long are you going to preach till I get through? Because eternity's too long to play around with stuff like this. Amen. I'm going to preach like a dying man to dying people. I'm going to preach like it's my last time. Because inside, uh, upside rather, eternity, this service ain't even a second long yet. It ain't even a blink long. 1 Corinthians 6 and 10. He said, neither covetousness, those that break the tenth commandment they covet their neighbor's wife they want everything everybody else got it's a lust for money the love of money the root of all evil first timothy 6 and 10 a lot of people are going to go to hell because of money he goes on he said drunkards well brother you know we all god gives us permission to have a little toddy for the body remember what paul said to begin with be not seen Oh, I know what they're going to say, them old sipping saints. Got that little frolicking faith. They got so much grace, they can do whatever they want to. And here's what they'll say. Well, Jesus turned water into wine. Yes, they told me that. Yeah, 
And you are just you just didn't made admission that you believe Jesus was a bartender and the disciples were a bunch of boozing brothers. Hello? Come to Jesus. Yeah, he's serving up wine coolers today. I'm going to preach on this for a minute. Because in Leviticus 10, 9, God says there was a rule for the high priest. He could not drink strong drink. Hebrews 10, 21 said Jesus is the high priest over the house of God. If Jesus would have been drinking alcoholic beverages and turning water into alcoholic wine when he was here, he had have forfeited himself from being worthy to be hanging on a cross to die for our sins, and that would mean his blood was a hoax. Because the Levitical law applied to him as a high priest. And if you were a high priest and you drunk strong drink, you were judged. You, you were out of the picture. So what did Jesus turn the water into? Wine. But what kind? In, 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 in Jewish culture in that time, it was said that it took 60 days, somewhere in that time frame, for the harvest of the vine that was placed in a container to actually ferment and become alcoholic. But the Bible said when Jesus in Matthew 26 and 29 said, I'll not drink of the fruit of this vine with you until I do it in my father with him in my kingdom, in my father's kingdom. The fruit of the vine was the grape that had just been picked, had just been tread out, and it was nothing more than the wine that they would call the fresh fruit. That means it was just the juice, just like your Welch's would be today with God help us the added sugar. Jesus drank with his apostles the fruit of the vine. It was still called wine. But it was actually said in that culture in that day that it was the best wine. Because it tasted better than the fermented age kind that would get you a little tipsy. But the harvest of the grape only came one time a year. So when they harvested the grapes and even the ones they let ferment to make alcoholic beverages with, uh, they would actually dilute it with water. It was 20 parts water, one part wine. You'd have to drink 20 glasses of it to even start getting a buzz. Because they thought it was barbaric to waste it seeing you only harvest it once a year. So even their wine then uh, was not is alcoholic as ours is today. You drink two glasses of wine now and you liable to be over there with Alice in Wonderland. Come on. Amen. But Jesus said the fruit of the vine. You remember in Luke chapter 7, they accused Jesus of being a wine bibber and a gluttonous man. And they also accused him and John the Baptist of being demon possessed. So if Jesus was a wine bibber, if he drank wine and turned water into wine and said, let's party hard and let's get drunk tonight. Well, then he just forfeited his worthiness to die on the cross for our sin and we're all lost. And that means he was an overeater too and that likewise he was possessed with the devil. Because if he was guilty of one, he's got to be guilty of all three. But I've come to tell you that is error. That is heresy. Glory to God. That is debauchery. That is deception. Come on, anybody here, Holy Ghost. That's blasphemy to say that Jesus, the Son of God, just to support your sin of drinking is okay. Remember in John 2 where he turned the water into wine? Yeah. Remember the governor of the feast after he drank it? He said, oh, you saved the best for last. Again, the good wine. The best wine in the culture of Jesus' day was not the fermented one. That's right. It was the grape that had just been tread out. The fruit of the vine. They, still, they called it all wine. They didn't call it grape juice. They, all of it they called wine. It was all wine to them. But somebody shot this wine didn't make you a wine oh, because it wasn't fermented. Yes. It was the best wine. That's what he turned the water into. Not the firm in it. One you got to develop a taste for. Top wine. The best one. The fruit of the vine. 
Amen. Proverbs 20 verse 1 says, Wines of malt and strong drinks raging, and he that's deceived thereby is not wise. To say Jesus turned water into wine and drank wine, come on, somebody that was fermented would to say he was deceived. Because God's word says, if you're deceived by there, you're not wise. Ain't it amazing? Before the devil ever put on the side of a can or a bottle, Budweiser, God said, Bud, you better wise up, because if you drink that stuff, you're not wise. Proverbs 23 talks about when it turns red in the cup and it stings like an adder. That means a serpent. In other words, that, that, that ferment is it's, it's moving. Well, you ever thought why they called it spirits? I went to Applebee's today. Thought I'd have me some grilled chicken with whatever it was and they had on that. It was good. But all their advertising everywhere else in there, hey man, and I even saw it on the table right there about spirits. You ever seen the places that sell alcohol? They call it spirits. You ever wonder why they call it spirits? Because alcoholism is not a disease, it's a demon. I ain't never met no man that got drunk every Saturday afternoon and by Sunday morning he says, oh, our family just got so much better and got so close. Well, Brother Marvin, they ain't no different than people overeating. Don't get me wrong, gluttony's a sin. Huh? But listen, I ain't never seen no law officer pull somebody over and said, okay, let's see if you've ate too much. Walk that line. Somebody shout, drunkards! Ain't gonna go to heaven. No, 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 no. Well, brother, I ain't a drunkard. Well, guess what? Every drunkard started off being a social drinker. If you social drink, you halfway there. You on your way. Because it's a spirit of addiction. And it's a starter drug. It leads to everything else. That's why Proverbs 23 talks about a man who's been beat and he wakes up the next morning. Read Proverbs 23. And he said, I failed it not. Hello? He's got so drunk the night before and he's got beat up in a brawl and he swole up. His face looks like, he looks like Rocky Balboa. He's so swole up, but he can't remember nothing. He don't know what happened. God said in his word in Proverbs 31, God says a king is not to drink strong drink because he'll forget God's law. Somebody shout to get drunk is to forget God's word. It's to tell God I don't need this right here. I'm going to do what I want. It's a devil. That's why Paul said don't be deceived. They're going to go to hell if they don't turn from it. If they don't repent. Somebody shout, y'all have yourself some new wine. It won't give you a hangover. It'll make you walk over. Come on, be not drunk with wine. Where it is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Ephesians 5, 18. The devil tries to give a copycat to everything the Holy Ghost does. Uh, he wants people to try to get high with them spirits because uh, they don't realize there's a most high from Holy Spirit, capital S. Uh, oh, he's the only one that can satisfy King Jesus, uh, Holy Ghost. Oh, Lord have mercy. He said revilers. 1 Corinthians 16, revilers. That's in party animals. Party hard. Can't party without a drug. Can't party without a drink. Extortioners. That's in people. Oh, slick wheelies. Come on, somebody. Steal you blind. Rob you. Making you think they're helping you. Thieves going to hell. Right. The Revelation 21 and 8 caused the sick at death. The Revelation 21 and 27 said there were no one enter in there except those that have their name written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Your name can be on the roll down here, but if it's on the roll up yonder, you'll be lost for eternity. I'm going to read just a few moments. 
And brother, it's kind of long tonight. Yeah, it's an eternal word. Luke 16, 19 through 31. I'm not reading it all out, but I'm going to take excerpts from each scripture to show you who in hell and what in hell. And before I do, John 3, 16. Let's back up John 3, 15 that Jesus told Nicodemus I preached about earlier. Whosoever believes in me Listen, should not perish but have everlasting life. That's John 3, 15. Before Jesus ever mentions about eternal life, he mentions should not perish. Perish speaks of hell. Then in verse 16 of John 3, most famous quoted scripture ever. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whoever believes in him should not perish. Somebody say, there it is. What is? Hell. That eternal horror house. Should not perish but have everlasting life. Before Jesus ever welcomed anybody to heaven, he warned them about hell where people perish. Look at your neighbor say, it's the hell of John 3.16. I know preachers get up and all they want to talk about is so loved. Jesus did. That's why he did it. He so loved you, he didn't want you to die and go to hell. He didn't want you to perish. He wanted you to be able to have everlasting life. And this rich man, he fared some to sleep. Every day. There was a beggar named Lazarus, full of sores, sat laid at his gate, wanted to be fed with the crumbs that fell from the rich man's table. And the dogs came and licked his sores. Verse 22 of Luke 16, it came to pass. Somebody say, it's going to come to pass. The beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man died and was buried. I'm sure the rich man, it don't show his name in this passage, and I'll tell you why in a moment. Because whosoever's name is not written in the book of life is cast in the lake of fire. Revelation 20 verse 15. Surely a rich man, his name would have been all over town. Everybody would have known his name. Surely Jesus knew his name, but Jesus chose not to call his name. Because his name was not in the book of life. But Lazarus, he mentioned. But they both died. One was sick. And one was healthy and rich. One was sick and poor and one was healthy and rich, but they both died. <clears throat> Hello? That's what we all got in common. If Jesus tarries, it don't matter how much money you got or you don't. It don't matter how healthy you are or how unhealthy you are or how young you are and how old you are. We all got death in common. There's once appointed unto man to die, and after that, the judgment, Hebrews 9, 27. Every graveyard, uh, amen, that you drive by testifies that the first part of that scripture is true. Well, if the first part's right, the rest of it is too. After that, there's going to be judgment. You're going to stand before God. They both died. The rich man, I'm sure it don't tell us because Jesus didn't make mention and he did it on purpose. I'm sure he had a big funeral. I'm sure he had all the best dressed pallbearers you can imagine toting his casket to be buried. Lazarus didn't have no bodies. But the Bible showed us in the spirit, Jesus went into the spirit with it. He said the angels escorted him into Abraham's bosom. Oh, when the righteous die, when those who are washed in the blood of Christ uh, close their eyes here, they're escorted by the beautifulest angels you could even imagine uh, into the portals of glory where there's no more dying, where there's no more sorrow, where there's no more pain, and the formal things are going to pass away. Uh, and 1 Corinthians 5 and 8 uh, said to be absent from your body is to be present with the Lord. Uh, ain't nobody that left this earth saved uh, wanting to come back. They've already looked at Jesus. They've walking with him now. If they left here without legs, they got brand new ones. If they left here without eyes, they got brand new ones. They don't hurt no more. Never will they hurt again. They'll never weep again. They'll never sorrow again. My God! But if you die without Jesus as Lord, Fallen angels, demons, some of the most horrible, ugliest creatures you that Hollywood ain't even never displayed will escort you into outer darkness where there's a flame that don't even give the benefit of light. Eternity 
separated from God. Verse 23 gives us immediately where the rich man is after he dies. Somebody say, and in hell. Verse 23, in hell. Somebody say, what in hell? Now he didn't just curse and neither do you because hell is a place before it's a word. He was in hell. Then it says he. Somebody say, who in hell? He was. The rich man. He lifted up his eyes being in torment. Somebody say, how low can you go? He's looking up. Yes. I mean, that's, that's, that's it. That's the pit. Yeah. Yeah. In torments, plural, with an S. Right. One of the torments is Pastor Ruby. He's looking up and he can see heaven. Oh, yeah. he can, can you imagine dying without Jesus and go to hell forever and, and forever be able to look up and see your parents, see your loved ones, see your friend, everybody that served Jesus and tried to warn you and tried to welcome you to give your life to Jesus that Jesus was calling you and for eternity you're going to be able to see them but can't get to them. Listen, and he sees Abraham afar off and Lazarus in his bosom. It's right there. Jesus said hell is, is, is naked before God. Proverbs 27 and 20. So God sees. This, I heard a preacher years ago trying to explain Luke 16 away that it was just a figuratively parable that Jesus told to speak to the Jews of that time that it weren't a literal word about eternity. And my reply to that was a big <laughs> devil is a liar. Listen to what happens in verse 24. He cried and said, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Ain't that amazing? In hell, everybody's trying to cry out for mercy. But in Psalms 36 and 5, the Bible said in the heavens are the mercy of God. There ain't no mercies in hell. The only mercy you'll find in eternity is in heaven with Jesus. He's crying out. Notice he's calling Abraham father. Ain't it amazing? Everybody in hell wants to call God father now. Everybody wants to believe now. Ain't no such thing as a dead atheist. You may say you don't believe in Jesus now and all this is a bunch of religious garbage. Well, I want you to know if you leave this earth without him, Lord, of your life, you won't be an unbeliever no more, but it'll be too late to believe that. Death makes a believer out of everybody. But it'll be too late after death. Let him come and dip his finger in the water and cool my tongue for I'm tormented in this flame. I am tormented. I am tormented. Tormented is past tense, but I am. Means it just keeps repeating itself over and over and over and over and over and over. He's wanting a little drink of water. They ain't even a little drink of water. Just let his finger dip in the water and let it just drip on my tongue. But Abraham said, son, Ain't that amazing? Called the man in hell son. Why did he call him son? Because he was saying, God was saying, you're my creation. But you didn't choose to be my child. Because we're not all God's children. Unless we've been washed in the blood of the Lamb. And we're all God's creation. Come on, somebody. But Galatians 3.26 said, you're children of God through faith in Jesus Christ. Until you give your life to Jesus, you're not a child of God. Though you're the creation of God. Don't be deceived. He called him son. Remember, somebody shout, that's one of the torments. In hell, you'll remember. You'll remember everything about this life. You'll remember for eternity every time you heard a preacher, amen, warn you about giving your life to Jesus before it's too everlastingly late. You'll remember every chance you had to get right with God. You'll hear the altar call gave, but you won't be able to go. That thou in thy lifetime receive of good things and lavish of evil things. But now he's covering you torment. I'm going to go on. Verse 26, he said, between us is the great gulf fixed. In other words, there's no way out of heaven. Don't nobody want to leave there. And there ain't no way out of hell, but everybody in hell screaming to get out. But this is hell's eternal horror house with no exits. Ain't nobody there wanting to stay. That's a torment. Can you imagine walking into a horror house and having the knowledge that you can never get out of it. Notice verse 27. 
Then he said, I pray thee, therefore, Father, still trying to be religious, that thou would send him to my father's house. Notice he said, I pray. Everybody in hell's wanting to pray now. They didn't have time to pray when they was on earth, but now everybody's wanting to pray. It's too late to pray when you're in hell. Well, preacher, why are you preaching this tonight? We're a bunch of saints. You don't know that. Hello? And there's hundreds that'll watch online, even thousands, in the next few days from the service right here tonight. Hello? But just like Holy Ghost revealed to me this morning from Psalms 119.53, horror hath taken grip on me because of the wicked that forsake your law. Friend, if the saints ever allow this holy horror to get in their spirit it's now you better get it in now because it'll change the way you pray for your loved ones it'll change the way you approach your worship to god and and the sincerity you have toward living for god come on somebody because hell is a real place i'm telling you we live in a time hallelujah where preachers have detoured from it i know it don't happen at this house but it's amazing it's become such a negative thing to even talk about but not so says the lord Verse 28, for I have five brethren, he said. Somebody say, what a witness from hell. In other words, if I can't get out of here, please let Lazarus go back from the dead and mourn my five brothers so they don't come. Here it is, verse 28, this place of torment. Somebody say, hell's a place. Verse 29, Abraham said unto him, they have Moses and the prophets. Let them hear him. Why was Abraham talking here? Why was Abraham's bosom? Because Abraham is the father of faith. In other words, this man didn't have time for faith in God when he was alive. Now he wants to have time for it, but it's too late. Yeah, yeah. Abraham's bosom in that time and day denoted intimacy. It was them sitting at a table uh, uh, like Jesus at the, with the uh, uh, Last Supper, they called it, or it was the Passover feast before he was crucified. They were leaning on each other. They didn't sit up right at a table. They sit on the ground real low to the table like some peoples do, like in China and different places like that. That's the way they do in the Middle East. And they would actually be leaning on each other. That's how John was always on Jesus' breast, hearing what Jesus was saying first before anybody else was. Read it in John 13. They were leaning on each other. They were almost in each other's lap there. That's how close they were just leaning over like that. And it, 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 it denoted closeness. Uh, hallelujah. So that's where Lazarus sat. He was in Abraham's bosom. And the people of that day understood that meant uh, he was with God. Uh, he was with God before he left. Uh, somebody shouts, you can't live. You can't die in faith until you live in faith. Uh, if you didn't live faith, you ain't going to die in faith when you die. And he said, let them hear Moses. Somebody shout, that's the written word. According to 1 Kings 8 and 56, there's not one word that was written by the hand of Moses that'll fail. Somebody shout, they have the written word. And they have the prophets. That's those God anoints to preach that word. Let them hear them. Verse 30, and he said, nay. Notice the rich man is still rebelling. He rebelled on the earth and he's still in rebellion. He's still rebelling. He's trying to tell God, no, that ain't the way it is. Amen. He said, nay, Father Abraham, but if one went unto them from the dead, they will repent. Verse 31, and he said, this is Abraham talking unto him, if they hear not Moses, somebody say the written word. The written word. Bible. And the prophets, somebody shout, that's those God anoints to preach it. They will not be persuaded though one rose from the dead. You know what that means? People's only escape from an eternal horror house called hell is a preacher. What a responsibility is laid on us. They can't get saved without a preacher. Because how can they hear? without a preacher how can they believe on him whom they have not heard and how can they hear without a preacher and you know why they so much deception in the day we live in there's always been devils there's always been wickedness there's always been sin since the garden in the fall the only difference now is is the apostasy that's in the pulpit The reason there's such an open blankness of deception concerning sin and eternal things is because there's been too many jellyfish backbone curved in their mouth who's been to cemetery, I mean seminary, and ain't been in the spirit, ain't been at the altar. 
Because if you talk to this God I'm talking about tonight that I'm preaching from his word about, he won't always tell you just to preach good things that people want to hear. He won't always just tell you to preach about heaven. Hallelujah. Matter of fact, the Holy Ghost I know, if he tells you to preach heaven, he'll cause you to preach hell before you ever get through. Any sermon you hear that only preaches heaven, hallelujah, is not the full gospel. And likewise, any message you hear that just about hell and don't invite you to heaven through the blood of the cross, hallelujah, is not the full gospel either. And you've heard both tonight. God let this holy horror hit the modern church, especially the modern preacher. And as your prophet, I call preachers to repent, except they burn in the lake of fire of those with those whom they didn't warn that go there. Lord, if you don't judge sin just as you said you would, You'll have to raise Sodom and Gomorrah from the dead and apologize. But you're just. You'll never have to do so. Because you judge righteously. And Lord, the soul that does not receive Jesus' sacrifice on the cross and repent and turn from their sin and turn to him will spend eternity trying to pay for their sin that they can never fully pay for. Because hadn't been but one worthy enough to pay the debt. For Jesus, you hang on that cross and David prophesied through the telescope of time in Psalms 22 and 1. And Jesus, it was fulfilled in Luke 23 when you cried out and you said, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? As you hang on the cross. Dying, tormented, so we could go to heaven if we would believe and repent. Lord, when you said, My God, why hast thou forsaken me? That's when God the Father turned his back and judgment came. And all the judgment for our sin eternally was placed in the perfect, holy, blameless body of Christ on the cross. And how shall we escape if we neglect so great a salvation? Hebrews 2, 3. How shall you escape the judgment of hell and its eternal flame and torments if you turn your back to the cross and the Christ that was crucified for your sins thereon? Jesus, the reason you said my God, well, how you forsaken me? Because that's hell. That's the worst pain hell offers. Is being forsook by mercy. God turns his back. Lord, you took the worst pain of hell. At that moment when you said, my God, why has you forsaken me? At that moment, you went to hell so we could go to heaven. If we'd believe on you. You took the penalties and the judgment in that one moment on the cross that we could none pay for in eternity. But Lord, if we don't accept the penalty which is you being crucified on the cross and raised from the dead. Forever we'll be trying to pay for it, but we'll never be able to pay it off. If we lived a million years, we'd never be found worthy enough to pay the debt. Lord, you didn't make hell for nobody but the devil and his angels. Matthew 25, 30, 41. So that's pretty clear. To go to hell, you just forget God. And that's where you'll be turned into, according to Psalms 9, 17. Just tell Jesus, no, I don't got time for you right now. I'm going to live the way I want to live, do what I want to do. So to go to hell is to follow the one that hell was made for, and that's the devil. 
For the devil sinneth from the beginning. And he that sinneth is of the devil. But for this purpose was the Son of God manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. 1 John 3 and 8. This whole reason Jesus died on the cross. I ain't going to call it the whole reason, but it's at the top of the list. It's the most important. So you wouldn't go to hell. So you wouldn't perish. God helped the church reclaim that message. Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost. If you know somebody that's kin to you, if they died tonight, you know exactly where they're going to go. You are to let this holy horror about this eternal horror house called hell with no exits so move you into a place of prayer right now in these altars for them. That this was like the last time you was ever going to get to pray for them. If you're sitting in this house or watching my video live or even in the future is after we've gone off there and it's a recording. And if in you right now there's a big question mark, what if I died now, would I make it to heaven or hell and you don't really know? You better make yourself an altar somewhere. You better cry out to him now. Because, friend, there's only forgiveness and mercy this side of eternity. You can't leave this earth and then believe. It won't work then. you got to believe before you die. you got to believe before Jesus returns. Today is the day of salvation, 2 Corinthians 6, 2. Now's the only time you have. Now or never could be reality. 